All right, so I was looking at my comments over my videos in the last handful of days, and you guys really wanted me to do a top 10 worst pickups of the year video. So I'm reading you guys' comments. Thank you guys for leaving them. And um, let's try to do that. What is going on guys, Hess here at CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals that I've posted for you guys, check the link in the description. As well as if you wanna buy a white hoodie like this for $27, it's a really good deal. And you can create your own ice dye creations like this uh, with the hoodies. So I personally, I really love this one. I just made this one the other day. Same exact hoodie, 27 bucks, and now I have like a really crazy looking hoodie from that. And for those people wondering like how I do this, I've done a couple different videos, but I have one really detailed tutorial that I'm working on. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe, and I'll have a tutorial. It's really not that difficult. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Anyway, so the subject at hand, worst pickups of the year. I mean, it's hard to remember all of them because some of them I buy and there's an intent to keep them and wear them. And then I get them, I'm like, these are just terrible. Like, like really, what am I gonna do with this shoe? So some of them I just end up selling or I end up giving them away. And so for this video, I really couldn't come up with 10 shoes that I regretted. There's like six of them that I wanted to mention. Personally, that just ones that I thought of off the top of my head. There might be some other ones that I'm forgetting though. Honestly, I'm getting old and forgetting things is very easy nowadays. But if you guys can think of other ones that I should have mentioned that you guys know I picked up, leave a comment in the comment section and remind me because Man, there's been some really good ones, but there's been some also some pretty trash ones. So first up on the list of the regrets is this shoe right here. This is the Off-White Vapor Street. And this one I got 40% off, and that was my justification for buying it because I got it for so cheap. But it's really a shoe that I, I look at, I'm like, there's just no, there's no way this is gonna go on my feet. It's the same reason why I had to give up on the regular Vapor Street, which I still have in a storage box somewhere. I don't know where. I still have the regular pair, and I remember they were too narrow. So why did I give it another try, especially with these weird spikies on it? This is, didn't make it better. It didn't make it more comfortable. It made it more awkward and more difficult to walk on for myself personally. And I'm not looking for a logistical challenge when I'm putting on shoes to wear around. This is a logistical challenge for me. So because of that, definitely regret this one. All right, next on the list, we have a pair that I really like, don't get me wrong. Like I thought this one was amazing when I saw it at ComplexCon, but the problem is this, like, I was waiting in line to buy stuff, didn't understand what was going on. I mean, just mad chaos. There's huge lines of people trying to get in to buy the stuff that I'm in the store able to buy. This is one of those things that they had for sale, and I didn't know enough about the shoe to want to buy it. The first thing's first, it's not a Nike shoe. It looks like a Nike shoe, but it's actually a custom, um, which is, it's a really good custom, don't get me wrong. The shape's a little bit odd in a couple spots, but it's a really good custom no, nonetheless, and it's a really premium custom. The part that I regret the most though is that I didn't check the price tags on any of it. This was $880, I think. At the end of the day, like that was a crazy, crazy price point for these. Also, the other ones that I got from the pack, which I still have, the Air Max 1 and the Air Max 95s, which I showed you guys all of three of these again in the Air Jordan 3 like Animal Instinct video, uh, because I have the, the other ones as well, which they overcharged for both of those too. 300 and 350 and then 880. I mean Crazy, crazy expensive. That's the thing I regret about it. It's not like a shoe that I regret having because it looks super crazy and they did a really good job on the custom. Uh, but because it's not an official Nike product, as well as the fact that it was so incredibly expensive, um, definitely put me out of my comfort zone and definitely one of those shoes that I kind of regret. If I could get a buyer for these, I'd probably sell them. I've just been too lazy to even look. But um, super dope, really, really nice quality. Not worth that $900 drain on my pockets though. All right, so next one I regret buying, this guy right here. Believe it or not, yes, I know. I fell for the hype a little bit. Got the Air Jordan 1 low, something that nobody was really feeling up until this year. Uh, and the, uh, the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 lows. Why do I regret it? Again, it's just a price thing. Like I personally don't like to pay resale for shoes. This is one that I figured I'd drop a little bit of change on and buy. Somebody accepted my bid and so I don't even remember what they cost, I think seven or $800. But it was right after Travis Scott said, uh, yeah, that we're not making any more of those. Basically, whoever got them is the ones that got them because they're not re-releasing. And then I think the internet exploded. These were going for over a thousand. I fell for that uh, FOMO effect, I guess, from him saying that. And I put in a bid that I thought was low enough because I thought the price would go up. But prices went down quite a bit on these in my size, 9.5, but maybe they'll go back up. Regardless, it's still not a shoe I dislike. I mean, I love brown sneakers, but the reason why I kind of regret it at this point is because I would have rather used that money 
and put it towards the high tops instead of buying the low tops. Unfortunately, fell for the hype and got a low top version here. That is a great shoe, just not worth the money that I paid for it. And the last three shoes that I regret buying, I don't even have on me because I got rid of them. Two of them I returned, one of them I sold. The one that I sold is the Yeezy Boots. So I bought the Yeezy Desert Boots for a review. They look kind of cool, but in person, they were just the, the oddest shape on the back section. And when I wore them, they were not the most comfortable because they had an elastic band that went around the heel and it just pulled towards um, my foot too much and it just made it kind of uncomfortable. Uh, so for that reason alone, I was like, cool, but not cool enough for me to keep. And luckily somebody bought them for close to what I paid at retail. So I'm happy with getting rid of them for what I paid. And, um, and one of those shoes that conceptually I like, but when you got them on feet, I just was like, oh, I can't, there's no way I could wear them for a full day without having them bug my feet. At least the way my feet are, other people probably don't have problems with them, but for me, it just wasn't working. The next shoe, one of the worst Nike shoes that I personally have tried on in the entire year, it's the Nike N110 DMSX. That's the name of the shoe. I mean, first of all, the name was terrible. The look of the shoe I thought was kind of rad. And the reason why I didn't like these shoes and how to return them is because when I put them on feet, there's a little plastic section on the back that sticks down so low. And I don't know if it's because I'm too heavy or not, but when I step in the React cushioning, it sinks down and that plastic part actually hits the, the pavement. It hits the cement that I'm walking on. And it just was not a comfortable feeling because of that. So as a result, I had to just send those things back. There was just no way I was gonna be able to make those work. And since then, I've seen those drop down to as low as 50 bucks. It's just a shoe that didn't pick up on the mainstream for sure. I'm sure my video didn't help for anybody that actually searched it. For, but for people like myself, I'm a little bit heavier, I guess, than the average person. A little heavier, of course, than my BMI or whatever. Not something I was interested in after that happened. And the number one shoe that was my worst purchase of 2019 has to be the Nike Joyride. Now, I know this is going to be, people are going to be like, <gasps> The Nike Joyride, I love that shoe. It's my it's my favorite shoe of the year. Some people really enjoy that shoe and that's totally cool if you do. There's a couple reasons why this one's the worst for me though. For one, for those people that have seen like my after wearing the Joyride video, basically like the comfort system's not terrible, but the design is flawed where I had to run into a river to save my kid out of the water. He tripped and fell in the water. It wasn't that deep, it was like this deep, but he fell in the water and I had to run in and grab him and help him up. And I had the Nike Joyrides on when I did that. Pulled them out and as you look in the shoe, the entire midsole is full of water now because this, the shoe was completely submerged. So as a result, um, it has like river water stuck in the middle of the shoe. And as a result, those shoes dried and they just smelled so bad because of that river water. I didn't even know what to do with them so I ended up returning them finally. And this is where the second part of the reason why these ones are number one on my list because it was the worst experience I've ever had with Nike support. So I ended up doing a return I talked to some people on Nike Plus app, the members, you know, Nike chat section or whatever. And I told them, you know, these things are defective and I don't like this design flaw on them. So I want to return them. They said, cool. They sent me a mailing label and then I slapped it on the box and shipped it off. Never heard anything back. And then I was like, wait a minute, it's been a month. I probably should check in with them and see what's going on. Checked in and they're like, oh yeah, like what was the item again? Like they had no idea what I was talking about. And then somebody else, another chat person comes on board and, and says, oh yeah, so um, we'll get back to you on that. And then I was like, okay. Two weeks later, I ping them again. They're like, we'll get back to you on that. And two weeks later, sorry about the inconvenience, we'll get back to you on that. And actually, it's been three months and they've had my shoes. They got the return and they never sent me my money. And so, and that was the part that I was like, wait, so you've had them for two months and you still haven't given me my refund, like why? And then they were like, oh, we're gonna send you a, um, a gift card in the mail, it's already being worked on, we'll let you know when it gets sent. And then I checked back and then they said they sent it and then they didn't send it. I finally did get my money back, but it just took three months to get a refund. So a note to you guys, never go to that Nike Plus app chat thing, it's just not worth it. Go to Nike in person and return something, that's what everybody's told me to do. It's by far the easiest thing to do because you'll get an exchange immediately. But the fact that the beads are able to absorb water because of the midsole is not having a protective layer, that's the first flaw. The second one being that they were geared towards kids and Harrison's ripped through so many pairs of sneakers already that if you cut through the bottom of the sole, you're gonna have those little crazy little beads flying out of the bottom of the shoe. And I cut a pair of those in half. You guys saw that happen. I mean, the, the balls 
flew air. balls are flying everywhere it was ridiculous but can you imagine a kid like having that happen first of all it'd be embarrassing but second it's like an environmental hazard so i really think that the joyride technology is going to be on its way out it's going to be one of those ones that was like cool it was fun to think about doing something different and new which i give them kudos on but the execution and the design of it uh, i think they should be left in 2019 that's my personal thoughts so what other sneakers did I miss, though, from uh, my worst pickups? I'm sure some of you guys are looking at my wall behind you going, I can't believe you didn't say that one or this one. But these are the ones that I remember. Um, and I'm doing this video for you guys for suggesting it. Shout out to you guys for suggesting the video. Also, um, I want to bring back top five videos. And I don't know what to do. So if you guys have a top five of a sneaker theme that you guys would like to see, um, I was doing top five Tuesdays every Tuesday. It was a lot of fun to do. And I miss doing them. Uh, but I would love to be able to bring back some sort of top five videos. So leave comments in the comment section, jumpstart me and let me know top five sneakers for X, Y, or Z. What do you guys want to see? And uh, hopefully you guys have a good rest of the year. It's not much left, but hopefully you guys have a good rest of the year and that uh, 2020 goes well for you guys. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching. More videos soon. Peace, guys.